Hey y'all, welcome back to Toya D T V. Toya D T V. <laughs> y'all, we are back from Married to Medicine, season eight, episode thirteen. Y'all, Chanel Charade. So, with this particular episode, we actually start off with the men, and I love it. I love it. I love it. So we see Eugene, Cecil, and Scott. They are all at Cecil's house. Now, they're down in the basement at the bar. And I like how they showed us what happened the last time they were all in the bar. Because Dr. Heavenly was jealous, honey. <laughs> but again, we see Cecil mixing up drinks. He's in his element. That's what he does. And they start talking about hell has officially froze over because Contessa and Toya are actually getting along. Now, I can see this happening because at the end of the day they were not it wasn't anything major that came in between them they just started off on a rocky note something stupid something small something petty the men said that hey they are now getting along and that's good they decided to stay out of it scott mentions that you know the practice is doing um the practice is going well everything is up he's uh wanting to hire a esthetician but he doesn't think contessa is going to let him hire that particular woman because Scott is in awe of this lady's beauty and he's showing pictures. First of all, why do you have a picture of her in your phone? You sound real stalkerish. If the only thing you did was look her up to interview her or whatever, whoever, I don't know how to, how to go about doing that. But why do you have her picture? Like, that's a little stalkerish, a little scary. <laughs> and then he's showing it around and saying, look at that glow on her. Man, look at that glow on her. Scott and Contessa are in a bad place, y'all. Contessa still has resentment in her heart about this schooling thing. Scott is just Scott. Scott is stuck in his ways and he does not want to change. So Cecil had a very important thing to say in this scene. He pointed out that at some point he had to take a step back and look at him. And what he realized when he did that is that he wanted to win everything with Simone. He wanted to win every every argument that they had, every disagreement that they had. He was like out to win it all for him, not for them, but for him. So he said that once he had to change his mindset on winning everything, he he realized that it drew them closer together because she wins some, he wins some and they could move forward together. Like, OK, you win. But, you know, at the end of the day. I'm still a winner because as together in a marriage, you walk forward together. Scott just straight up said, you know what? Maybe I'm at the age where I just don't want to change. Maybe I'm at the age where I'm not changing. I'm not doing anything different. Take it or leave it. Next, y'all, we see Anila. She is back at the house that she's uh, renovating and she is with uh, Miss Gomez, her nanny. So they're walking through the house, looking at the house and making sure everything is good. She feels very accomplished and I'm proud of her now that she's told her story that when you're bullied and picked on, the stuff sticks with you. So even at an adult age, you feel like, am I good enough? So I like that transparent moment with her because not the average person is going to come on national television and say that the house is looking good. Everything is headed in the right direction. They just need to get lighting appliances and countertops. So while they were in the renovated, the newly renovated home, Miss Gomez tells uh, Anila that her daughter made a comment that she wished she had blonde hair and blue eyes because it, it makes it makes you beautiful. That scene tore me up, y'all. That scene is so sad because adults, some adults truly feel like children don't go through anything. What do we hear all the time? We hear, Oh, they're kids. They live rent free. They don't know what real stress is. Oh, they're young. They don't have anything to worry about. They don't even know what real life is yet. Y'all, these kids go through a lot. A lot. If y'all only knew my testimony. If y'all only knew a part of my testimony, you would stop saying that. But y'all, it broke my heart. But when I first heard that, my mind went to, is she only around uh, certain people? Like, what is it? So then they go into further detail and she goes to a private school. So everybody at the private school that she attends has blonde hair and blue eyes. 
Anila got, you know, upset, which is rightfully so. As a parent, you don't want your children stressing. She's in kindergarten. Kindergarten. You don't want your kids to be hurt by something that is beyond your control. But at the same time, you got to start at a very, very young age, molding your children, teaching your children, um, building your children up, build them up from babies. Let them know it's beautiful. It is beautiful regardless of what people think, what people say. Honey, I'm, I'm good in the skin I'm in. I'm good. I wouldn't want to be anybody else but who I am right now. I love the vibe and the mojo that we get. Like, we come with a whole vibe on our own. I love it. We have people questioning, well, how does she do her hair? How does... We're mysterious to them. Some people don't get it. But I love it. I love that's a part of who I am. So next we see Dr. Simone and Dr. Jackie. They're pulling up. Well, Simone is pulling up at Jackie's office. They are being cute, y'all. They are back. Good friends. Doing their little cheesy, <laughs> their cheesy little patty cake, whatever it is. Simone is bringing her lunch. So, y'all, it looks like they are back on track. I love to see it. I love it. I love that they are back on track. I love Simone's back in there being loud. Jackie asked Simone, hey, I heard you're doing this uh, town hall meeting about getting people to vote. And you chose Lisa Nicole to do this event with? Jackie was confused and so was I, y'all. Because, in my opinion, when you see that something has blown up with a business, regardless of what it was or how it happened or whatever the case was, you know something wasn't right. I would be reluctant to try and run an event with that particular person without having a contract, without having things in writing or, you know, doing doing it the legal way. Well, Simone then tells Dr. Jackie that basically she said that the town hall meeting would be great to get people out and vote, make sure that they know that they're important and it would increase the black votes at the polls. And she said she mentioned that one thing and Lisa Nicole ran with it. Lisa Nicole invited all these people. She had a whole list of celebrities that she's invited. She is um, sending out letters, um, doing panels, uh, actually picking out the location and everything. Now, this was supposed to be run by Simone. And if I'm not mistaken, all the women, all the ladies in the group. But Simone and Lisa Nicole were supposed to be like the head of it. So at the end of the day, Simone is confused. Simone is disappointed and mad and is not understanding what's happening. So next we see Dr. Heavenly and Zachary and they are at their Airbnb that she purchased, renovated the inside to kind of get it looking the way they want it to look. And I love this scene because Heavenly breaks down how you can get generational wealth. She just kind of put it out there. If you purchase a property, so whatever your mortgage is for that property, you just have to rent it out for a certain amount, at least whatever number of times per month. And whatever you rent over that is profit. So I love, love, love how she educates her children. Not only does she educate her children, she educates us. She educates the people watching. Some people don't like Dr. Heavenly, but you can say what you want. This lady knows how to gain money, pass it on and have a legacy and money to pass down. Basically, Zach, inside the house, he has done the sheer basics. It's not beautified. He doesn't know how to decorate. And <laughs> that's just that. She said, basically, that needs to be left to somebody else because Zach can't do it. So then they're sitting outside and Dr. Heavenly decides to ask him, well, what type of woman do you want? Do y'all really do this to y'all kids? I want to know. I don't have children. Well, I don't have human children right now. But do y'all start pressuring y'all kids at a certain age on are you are you going to get married are you going to do this are you going to do that does that happen because it comes off a little weird to me it, it, it comes off a little weird because it's almost like you're trying to subtly push them into a relationship i don't know why everybody thinks people are supposed to be with somebody everybody is not meant to be in a relationship everybody is not meant to be married and some of y'all are wrong because y'all are online saying she need to be asking if he even like women. That is his business, whether it is or if it's not. And I personally would not want that to come out on TV. That is his personal business. And he has been reluctant in the past years to even record. So y'all need to stop fishing so deep when it comes down to the kids of the cast. Like, yeah, they're on TV, but come on now. They're still young. Y'all next we see uh, Contessa. She's meeting up with her life coach. I have to say that I am proud of Contessa for being so transparent in this scene. 
it's not easy to hear. It's not, and I can only imagine that it was not easy to go through. So Contessa lets us know that in the beginning of this meeting, what she's looking for is clarity, peace, and understanding. At a young age, she was the middle child. Her mom had breast cancer at 25 and her dad was on drugs. She couldn't rely on her father to be there. So it's, it almost seemed like to me that that means that the children raised themselves. The therapist asked her, okay, so your dad was unavailable. Your mom was sick. So she was basically unavailable. And Contessa feels like, yeah. So the, the therapist asked her, did she marry her dad? She said, with the unavailability, yes, she did marry her father. I like that Contessa is professionally going through her feelings. She's getting to the root of what's going on here because it's not all Scott. It's not all Scott. So it boils down to Contessa has always had to been the person that got stuff done. She was the middle child. She didn't want to be a problem. So she studied and did everything she could do to try to get the family moved forward, getting them above water, having them to be able to sustain themselves. And I think she kind of put herself on the back burner to make that happen. And that's a part of the go-getter mentality that we see when it comes down to Contessa. Um, the therapist asked her, does she trust Scott with her heart? And Contessa said no, because he has said some very harsh things to her. Like, oh, I was, I was so close to being done with you. And she said, because she went to school. That's not why. It's all, with them, it's all boiling down to communication. It's all boiling down to communication. It's not because you went to school, Contessa. So we then see Anila again. She's back at her main, her house that she lives in right now. And she was just kind of asking the children about their day. So of course she get over to Ariana and they have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, talk because it's time. And she's brushing her daughter's hair and telling her that her skin is beautiful and that her brown eyes are beautiful. And that there was an Indian woman who won Miss America, which is a beauty pageant. And that, um, kind of was like, okay, the girl kind of, you know, oh, okay. Like, I'm sure she probably wasn't aware because she's so young, but she boosted her baby girl's head up and she let her know, hey, well, I was told that you thought blue, blue eyes and blonde hair was beautiful. It is beautiful, but also brown skin and brown eyes are beautiful as well. It makes you very unique and it makes you very, very different. And it is a great thing. So she, you know, instilled that into her daughter and I loved it. I love to see children being boosted up just like Melody Holt. She boosted her children up. You are young, young kings and queens and our hair is different and our hair is beautiful. I love it. I mean, you got a baby sitting on the counter who can't even talk yet and you're instilling beauty into her. That is how you're supposed to do it. So then y'all next we see ignorant Lisa Nicole. So we're at her house and <laughs> she's got Chef Daryl in there whipping up a six course meal, honey. Six courses. So she, she's she got the works for the ladies. All right. So this is the planning event where information event where all the ladies are going to get information on what is happening with this um, voting events, voting details, how it's going to work, where it's going to be, all of the above. Right. OK. So the first one there is Anila and Anila and Lisa Nicole are just sitting down kind of chatting a little bit of course um anila whips out her phone like look at the picture i took in your dress i didn't like the dress the dress was ugly in my opinion but anyway so they talked about that then other people started coming in right simone came in and simone, <laughs> simone was irritated and you know what y'all i like simone simone don't, doesn't have fashion style but i like simone simone will get that neck rock on and she will get that finger going and still go right back to being professional, a professional doctor. Okay. Simone came in and she just kind of sat down and the whole vibe changed. And everybody's like, Simone, you don't really seem like yourself. Are you sad? Are you okay? And um, as this is going on, other people are coming in. So we got Carrie and um, some other people trickle in. So Simone just breaks, um, break it down for Lisa Nicole. No, I'm not sad. I'm annoyed. Why, why, why? Well, she lets her know, basically, because we are supposed to be doing this event. You are doing everything, sending everything with your name out on it. But you're saying that you want me on the panel and I haven't helped you plan anything, even though it's supposed to be a joint event. According to her, it is a joint event and, and she's not overdoing it. She's just excited and she's doing this and doing that. 
Lisa Nicole is still not owning the fact that she is planning this event and she just wants Simone to be there, basically, with her name on it. But wants her money, probably. So, Heavenly comes in and she goes to hug her, hug Lisa Nicole. Now, they don't have the best history, as y'all can see. But Lisa Nicole pulls out a measuring tape. And Dr. Heavenly, Dr. Heavenly pulls it off and was like, look, all right, now, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. I'm telling you now. While this is happening, we see Toya over there rearranging the seating arrangements. She's changing name tags to sit with who she want to sit with. And <laughs> it's kind of crazy. I don't put nothing past these ladies. And it wouldn't kill me to sit beside somebody I don't really get along with. But okay. So anyway, everybody is sitting down eating. The chef has served everybody. Y'all, I love Miss Quad. Miss Quad. She got it. She got it. Hey, Miss Quad. Miss Quad. She got it. She got it. But y'all, I don't like that blonde on her. Now, in the confessional, she had like blonde streaks. I love that. But the solid blonde up here and then a darker at the bottom. I don't like the solid blonde anywhere on her. Or heavenly. I feel like everybody want to rock the blonde, but the blonde is not for everybody. Like, I mean, I guess if you like it, you like it. But it looks weird with the camera. I don't know if it's the lighting. But what we see is not cute. Quad actually compliments the chef. So Lisa Nicole must have brought it, honey. She must have brought it better than Simone because Quad had nothing but a long list of what she would have done at Simone's event. Simone ain't done yet. Okay, so they at the table asking questions. So who all is throwing this, actually throwing this event? Who's the host? Lisa Nicole, well, me and Simone, mm -mm, it's Lisa Nicole. <laughs> so Simone is still giving it to her, okay? And I'm loving every moment of it because wrong is wrong and right is right, okay? Lisa Nicole is like, okay, I got excited. I got excited. I just jumped and started doing all the planning. Personally, I think this is what she do with, with everything. So Lisa pulls out the gift, the Chanel, the Chanel gift bag, and she wanted to give it to Dr. Heavenly. Dr. Heavenly already knew it was some crap, some bull, a shenanigan. So she won't interest it. She was like, you know what? I'm here for the voters registration. If we're not going to talk about that, I got better things to do. I'm gone. A lot of people feel like uh, Heavenly ran up out of that scene like she can dish it, but she can't take it But honestly when somebody tells you that you're coming to do something professional and it turns out to be Everything but and you have your you have your professional mindset on and you're thinking okay We're gonna talk business when that doesn't happen. You're like, okay, whatever. I'm done. I'm good This is another another catch me another day with this now Dr. Heavenly was already irritated when she put the tape measure around her waist. So I don't blame her for leaving it is what it is. If you're not going to talk business, then I'm not. If it's not business, I wouldn't be here. That's how I see it. Because her and Lisa Nicole don't get along. Why else would she be in Lisa Nicole house? They're all sitting at the table. And for some reason, Toya decides to start lashing out at Jackie. Toya said, you, uh, you let her degrade people, act out. You let her say and do whatever. And Dr. Jackie is just like, change your tone. You're talking to me. You need to change your tone. Toya was talking to Jackie like, you let her do whatever. You let her say and everything. You... Why do people feel like anybody can control Dr. Heavenly? Just because you're friends with somebody don't mean you have control over them. And it's weird that Toya would even look at Dr. Jackie and say that. Because whenever Toya's out of control, Dr. Jackie don't come running to her telling her to shut up. And Toya is out of control a lot. She takes she takes Toya to the bathroom because Toya's getting amped up. Why? What? Change your tone. Change your tone. No. Not until you make her own it. Not until you own yours. So it was a whole back and forth thing. Okay. Went to the bathroom, right? Okay. Toya met Dr. Heavenly before she met any of the other cast members. Dr. He she met her 12 years ago. She was introduced to her and Eugene through Dr. Damon. They admired them. They looked up to them. They felt like, hey, we can learn a lot from them. Toya introduced Dr. Heavenly to this circle of friends. For some reason... Toya said that Dr. Heavenly just started talking about her, even though she was the one who introduced her to the group of friends. So that kind of tells me that they did not have like a personal relationship. It sounds like to me they had a professional relationship, right? There's a difference. So if the only place you see somebody is in a professional setting, they're not going to be wide open. They're not going to be jokey, jokey, laughy, laughy. They're not going to be that. They're going to be on their professionalism, right? So Toya is hurt because she doesn't know where things started to spiral down. And she said that, how do you 
how do you get meaner towards somebody? And it really bothered her that she called her stupid. And Daughter Heavenly has. She has really, you know, beat Toya, beat Toya, beat Toya, beat Toya. And then eventually Toya started saying stuff back. But she's saying that's why she's hurt. Okay, cool. Her and Jackie go back out to the table. Now, in the meantime, Contessa convinced Heavenly to come back in. Heavenly says she don't want to leave the event in a negative way. So she's going to come back in, sit for a few minutes, and then she's gone. So she came back in. <laughs> And that's when uh, Toya was like, your pit is back. Your pit is back. Are you going to you gonna rear up now because she's here? Are you going to do that? Now, I can see what Toya means in that particular uh, setting. Toya feels like Jackie is more vocal when Heavenly is around. I can see that because what Jackie won't say, Dr. Heavenly will. Y'all can't tell me that Jackie and Heavenly ain't sat around and had a laugh and a kiki about this show. And I can guarantee Jackie didn't just sit there. Oh, it was going back and forth between the both of them. I can guarantee it because Heavenly is a fool. Heavenly will have you cracking up laughing. And Jackie, when those cameras are off, I believe Jackie goes back and forth with Heavenly. I do. With the jokes, with the who's cheap, with the who's fat, with all of that, in my opinion. I never forget Dr. Jackie. Jackie fat shamed that girl. That girl said she was healthy. Dr. Jackie said, you said you're what? Dr. Jackie swung her head around so fast that that girl, yeah. But y'all, that was it. Tell me what y'all think about this episode, and I will see y'all next time.